day class. So welcome to our new topic about animal production. So for today's lesson, we will be talking about how will you participate in workplace communication. If, but before we proceed, let's have our objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to use effective questioning and active listening and speaking to gather and convey information. Use appropriate medium to transfer information and ideas. Ask and respond to questions on simple routine to workplace procedures and matters concerning conditions of employment. Interpret and implement meeting outcomes. Record workplace data on standard workplace forms and documents. And identify and rectify documents. Okay, before we discuss, let's take this test. For our pre-test for today, it is all about word completion. So you will just fill in the blank with appropriate letter that will complete the word or phrase based on the given clue. Okay, so you can get another piece of paper so that you will write your, write down your answer. Okay, so first we have type of communication done by simply talking to a person face to face or by the use of phone, radio, television, or other media. Two is a process of exchange of information or ideas in order to understand and connect people with one another. Next is the person who feed the message to the one he or she talked with. Four is the barrier that hinder effective communication due to different practices. Lastly, it is a barrier that leads to a variety of assumptions. So you have enough time to answer these five questions. Okay, so let's try to answer. Number one is verbal. Two is communication. Three is the sender. 4 is cultural and 5 is perception. So what's your score? If you scored 3 to 5, then congratulations. If you scored 2 or below, try to uh, review your questions and answer these questions again. Okay? Next. So how do you define communication? Can you please give me one sentence? That will define communication based on your understanding. Okay, very good. So according to Oxford Languages, communication is the imparting or exchanging of information or news. It means of sending or receiving information such as phone lines or computers. So communication exists between two or more people exchanging ideas okay, through feedback or reply. So communication is a process of which people exchange information and ideas in order to understand each other. It connects people by letting them create and share meaning from the things they see, hear, and feel. It includes emails, text messages, notes, calls, and others. The use of appropriate medium to transfer information and ideas will help us achieve proper communication on our workplace. Thus, having an effective communication with other people is tremendously important because it builds a sense of trust and increases productivity and efficiency. So basic tips in proper and effective communication in the workplace. First is to be a good listener. In communication, remember that it is not important or, or rather it is not always you who will do the talking. We need to listen properly in order to understand the information that the sender is trying to give. So just like uh, what a quotation said, think or listen before you speak. Okay? So know who are you who are talking to. We communicate with, uh, with different kinds of people. That is why it is important for us to figure out another person's attitude and give their relationship with you in order for you to get along with them and communicate. Get to the point. You have to remember that it's not just you who are busy in your workplace. Your, co your co-workers are also busy with their daily tasks. That's why message needs to be short and straight to the point. Time is gold. 
Next is understanding appropriate language structures. We have the yes or no questions. So yes or no questions are often defined as questions that only take either yes or no as an answer. This can be helpful when checking facts or clarifying a point or providing some direction to the information being gathered. Okay? Next is tag questions. Tag questions are short questions added to the end of a positive or negative statements. These are used to verify or check information that you think is true or to check information that you aren't sure about. So for example, she's a farmer, isn't she? He isn't here, is he? I don't need to finish this today, do I? They could hear me, couldn't they? I nev I'm never on time, am I? So the tag questions here are the isn't she, is he, do I, couldn't they, and am I? Okay? So WH questions. So I'm sure that we are all familiar with WH questions. So example of these are why, what, who, where, and when. So it includes questions, words with, starts with WH. They provide breadth and are helpful for gaining more detailed and better quality information. Exploring ideas and opinions are crystallizing someone's thoughts. Okay, so what to expect in a meeting? So here are some of the basic expectations in a meeting. First is providing an agenda. So an agenda aims to keep discussions on track and to keep, keep everyone focused on the issues. The agenda should be distributed to attendees before the meeting. An agenda is proposed for approval before the meeting. Okay? Next is to start and finish on time. So we said a while ago, time is gold. So make sure that meeting starts and finishes on time so that participants feel that their time is valued and that they can plan for effective meeting participation to fit within their workload. Next is to manage the participants. It is important that every person feels their attendance is and contribution is valued. So people must be given the opportunity to express their opinions as well as recognizing they must also, also listen to others without interruption. So six tips on how to participate in a meeting. First is to be prepared. You need to be, to be prepared for the meeting by reading the agenda and brushing up on what's going on. Okay, so you need to prepare yourself mentally and physically as well as emotionally. Okay, so pick your battles. If someone makes an error or you disagree with him, think before you speak. Contribute. Remember this. Do not leave a meeting without contributing. Okay? So some meetings are primarily for giving information. So others are more interactive. Either way, take an opportunity to ask a question, make a comment, or just lend your support. Next is choose your timing. Don't be the first one to comment on a presentation or proposal if you are not senior management or an expert. So your questions and comments might be answered by someone else who goes after you and you might learn that you misinterpreted what was said. Don't dominate. After you make a point, wait for others to chime in. They might make another point you were going to add, giving a chance to sit back and contribute later. Okay, so give them, give your co-workers a chance to ask some questions also. So, and last one, soften objections. If you see problems with ideas or proposals, try to frame your concerns in a positive way. This gives the person a chance to show they have the situation covered. Okay? Next, common barriers to effective communication at workplace. First is the physical barriers. Example of these are the structure, location, and construction of the workplace. An employee seated remotely from each other hinders effective communication. Okay? Language barriers. Employees with different native languages will be working in an organization. So it is hard for us to communicate with each other if we do not understand the language that we are using. Okay? 
So it is better if we learn different languages so that we can communicate better with other people. Okay? Or the language that is dominantly used in that workplace. Cultural barriers. Employees from different cultures following different practices will be working in an organization. So just like language barriers, before you work in that specific company, you need to learn what are their cultures, what do they do every day so that you can cope up. Okay? Next is emotional barriers. Emotional barriers like fear, inferiority, shyness, lack of self-confidence and skills will stop an employee in communicating effectively with his colleagues. And perception barriers. Employees will have different experience, values, preferences, and attitudes. This may lead to a variety of assumptions and can act as a communi communication barrier. Okay? So next is the common forms and documents you need to complete on your workplace. Uh, you need to have on your workplace. Okay? First is the resume. Resume is a document used to present individual's background and skills. It is used to secure new employment. So before you get a job, you need to prepare a resume so that it contains all the information about you, your previous works, your skills, your objectives, as well as some contact information for them to call. Next is the application letter. So application letter summarizes knowledge and experiences of an employee and details as to why he is qualified for the job. So form an introduction with your potential employee. Okay? So it comes with the resume. Okay? Before you uh, apply for a work, you need to secure an application letter and a resume. Okay? Next is the contract. Once you have get that particular job, you need to sign your contract wherein it is a legal agreement between you and your employer or two or more competent industries have to do with employment, sale or lease or tenancy. So, contract does not only exist between the employer and employees. So, contract exists also with an industry to another industry or company from other company. Yeah. Next is the timesheet. Timesheet is a method used for recording the number of hours worked. Next is the leave forms. Okay? So, leave forms is a request for leave of absence during critical conditions. Okay? So next, qualities of an effective written communication. You need to be concise. Avoid necessary details. So direct to the point. Concrete. Do not be a uh, do not generalize, be specific and avoid abstract words. Be clear. Think before you write. You must plan your writing to be sure it is complete and do not omit or delete some important details. You need to consider, be considerate. Do not let your reader feel pressured. Make them feel that they can benefit from the action instead. Be courteous or be polite with your words and observe the attack. And correctness. Double check your document. Look for errors in grammar, spelling, format, and punctuation. Okay? So before we end our lesson, let's have this quiz. So I have a two set of questions that you need to answer. First is that as a real student, why is it important to be an effective communicator? Okay, so you have enough time to answer. Okay, so I assume that you already wrote your answer in a piece of paper. So as a real student, why is it important to be an effective communicator? So, being effective, a good communicator allows us and other people to understand information accurately and quickly. And it also lessens confusion and gives clarity. Next, is what is the importance of participating in workplace communication? Okay, so how is it important? Communication, as we said a while ago, is a two-way process. 
that it requires feedbacks from each party in order to build trust and increase their productivity. Most of all, effective communication gets the work done efficient. Okay? So before we end our discussion, I will leave you these words to ponder from Christopher Mulder. He said that there is no there is only one rule for being a good talker. Learn to listen. Okay? So that's all for today. So I hope you learned something from our discussion. So thank you.